We tow it back into one of these facilities and it sits there for about three months while it goes through its post flight uh, securing and uh, it, uh, behind this six story building here. You see it over there next to the vehicle assembly building. Right over there, you can just see it sticking out. That's the launch control center. That's the blockhouse. This whole thing is She's from Canada. So we'll be uh, right with you to tell you the details of that. So we're down counting to T minus nine minutes. Don't go too far. Oh, yes, that's true. And I understand Dave Brown's mother, who had her 54th wedding anniversary yesterday, has her birthday tomorrow. She's going to be 32. <laughs> Major General runs the astronaut office. She tells us what to do, and we do it. Carolyn Wolverton, right here in yellow. By the way, at the moment of launch, we'll ask everybody that is in front to sit down, including those guys in blue suit, so that everybody will be able to see. And again, remember, one o'clock pad is where you're looking. Here, 
Uh, that means that if they had to evacuate the pad at this very point in time, they're the only ones out there. Everybody is gone away, as you can T see. Minus three minutes, Our astronauts who took care of the counting. vehicle are now here with and us. Final aero surface check, so the orbiter They have to bring back the pass rail for them to come time. back out, so it would take this a few uh, seconds. Hydraulic systems. And next we'll see the three main engines be gimbaled as a final test prior to launch. They're going to be able to direct the space shuttle in the right are direction. are operating with no problems reported. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood will be slowly retracted away from the top of the external tank. And William McCool just clear the computer from all messages. <laughs> DDLPS, no hold, no LCC, RF glitch, we're inhibiting the redundant switch and the active step. Okay, we copy. You copy? copy. And you're still going. T minus one minute, 30 seconds, and counting. If you have misplaced a pair of eyeglasses, or a uh, small visitor center bag. The liquid hydrogen tank Please inside the external the tank is reported to be at the proper flight pressures. T minus one minute and counting. And we're coming up on a go for our auto sequence start. <laughs> and we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds and counting. 15 seconds. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 5, Four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission finally underway. Columbia now rolling on to the proper azimuth for me. Joined on the flight deck by pilot Willie McCool, flight engineer Colton Chabla, and mission specialist Dave Brown, mission specialist Laurel Clark, payload commander Mike Anderson, and payload specialist Elon Ramon seated down on the mid deck. One minute, 26 seconds into the flight, Columbia 10 miles downrange, 13 miles in altitude, traveling at 1800 miles an hour. Keep on looking, you'll see the, so the solid separate if you, if you, if you look Precisely, you'll see two round little lights away from solid going rocket away. booster separation. Everything looking good on board, Columbia. Oh, look at that. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance now converging. Columbia's onboard computers commanding the main engine. Columbia now 
now 43 miles downrange, 35 miles in altitude, traveling 3,200 miles an hour. The propulsion officer and mission control reporting that the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited, providing Columbia with a boost uphill for the next 90 seconds. If you look closely, the boosters are on the side of that little light. On each side, right and left. Now falling below. Downrange. Everything aboard Columbia in great shape. Three good main engines. Three good auxiliary power units. Three good fuel cells. Indicating that should we encounter a main engine failure. Columbia could reach a trans-oceanic abort site in Moron, Spain. However, all three main engines functioning by the book. Columbia 85 miles downrange, 50 miles in altitude, traveling almost 4,000 miles an hour. They just announced that, uh, that even Columbia if they lost an engine, they could go and land in North Africa. So now they're higher, faster, there is more option. So the faster and the higher they go, the safer they are. Okay, you have to go to the is Mico, M-E-C-O for me? Well, at least not for 16 days. The Kennedy Space Center, 62 miles in altitude, traveling more than 5,000 miles an hour, on course and on time. For its orbit, 850 miles above the Earth. At this time, the acceleration pressures are building on the crew. So they're starting to feel real heavy in their seat. The, the oh, right is smooth, uh, it's uh, very uh, calm uh, inside, it's not shaky uh, like it was in the first few minutes. But they're really now starting the pressure, it's very heavy on their chest. miles in altitude, traveling almost 9,000 miles an hour as we approach the six-minute mark into the flight. We'll be in great shape, 500 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center at the seven-minute mark into the flight. <laughs> Columbia is 620 miles downrange, less than a minute away from main engine cutoff. By now, even though the engines are not shut off, they're in space, so they've passed the 100-mile altitude point. Okay, watch for me, Coco. Eight minutes into the flight of Columbia, the orbiter's 736 miles downrange, traveling almost 16,000 miles an hour, 70 miles in altitude, about 20 minutes... And Bakken, that you just saw left off into their space home, their spaceship that will be their home for the next 16 days. And it's a huge choreography that they have to do, all of them, irrespective of how they feel at this very point in time. Uh, they really have to reconfigure the onboard computer, set up the town, pack up their suit, open up the cargo bay doors, which are needed for cooling, deploy the antenna so they can talk to us better on the ground. And now they're on for their mission. So the, I hope you had as much emotion as we did. I, it's probably the funniest launch I see in every single time. Out of my stomach. Everything have a few more minutes, you can roam around the and, and, and stand up, and then an in about five minutes we'll make a call to come back to the bus. Godspeed to Columbia. Thank you all.